Daniela, you know, what is so interesting about your journey is the time that you did it, right? It's around 10 years ago when you became the first Angolan woman to take that Miss Universe crown. But before we get into those details, many of, you, many of the people in this room are meeting you now for the first time. Tell us who is Leila Lopez. Leila Lopez. I'm Angolan, African, like most of us in here, proud with a lot of dreams. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm currently studying international relations with politics because I want to be a leader. Not just a leader, I want to be a great leader. So you grew up at a time when Angola was coming from quite a difficult space in its, its, its colonial history. Yet you went on as a young girl to think that I can actually become Miss Universe despite the challenges that you grew up in. What was in your mind at that time? How were you able to dream big at a time when things were so tough in Angola? Um, I remember when the war like broke out really big. I was about six, seven years old, like in 93, to be more precise. And I remember like there was no food, no power, schools were closed, mm -hmm. and my mom would l used to light up a candle and say, hey, come, time to do your homework. I was, I was like, mom, how come, homework? How, I didn't go to school. She's like, well, it's my homework for you. Mm -hmm. You don't go to school, but in, in the house, I, I'm your educator. I can give you homework as well. So she used to like teach me the, I, the importance of being educated. And this lesson I carry with me throughout my life. Uh, during my time as a beauty queen, mm. I had to stop school. I was actually living in the UK when I decided to do pageants. And when I won, I couldn't go back to school because I had to travel the world and everything. So then, after I was done with the pageant life, uh, I found my husband, we got married, we had a baby last hey. year. <laughs> we had a baby last year, and I remember my baby was two months old. I was breastfeeding, and I was like, what message can I give to my baby? What um, example can I, like one day, I want my baby to be proud of me the way I'm proud of my mom, the way I always say that my mom told me the importance of education during the toughest time. I don't remember having a tougher time than uh, the war time. So I was looking at my baby and I was like, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy for my baby. So what's the best way? I, w I already had my business. So I, I was feeling accomplished. But I was like, no, there is one thing that I really need to do to feel complete. And I said, I'm going back to school. So I went back to school, I'm now in my second year. It was hard, I was breastfeeding. There were, there were days that I had to spend the whole day at university, so I had to pump. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> uh, was tough, but now, like, next year I'll be graduating, oh, and fantastic. there is no better feeling than that. Fantastic. And I want to talk to you about your business in just a moment and also talk to you about what you're planning to do with its, its international relations and politics that you are studying, right? Uh, you yes. might want to meet our minister. I don't know. She might want to just say hi I, a little I definitely later. want to meet her. <laughs> Divulge your plans for Angola. But even getting your crown, we all know that uh, success and the path to success is not an easy one. You know, you face resistance along the way. And you did face it because there were those that said that you didn't actually deserve to be at that platform in representing Angola. People wanted you out of that race. What kept you going? Uh, you know, it's hard being a woman. It's hard being a beauty queen. A lot of judgment. But it's even harder to be a black beauty queen. And I was a black beauty queen in America was very hard. So I've never faced that much uh, racism in my life. I grew up in Angola. So to me, being black was normal. But in America, I was like, what's wrong with people? 
why, it was always like, oh, well, for an African, you actually can speak. For an African girl, uh, you look better, you look different. How can you use the fork and knife? Who told you that? So this type of comments used to make me feel uh, uncomfortable, mm. very uncomfortable. But then I remember one day I went home, because sometimes going to events in New York were like frustrating, you know? So one day I went home, I look in the mirror, I, I, I love to talk, especially to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at the mirror and I was like, who am I? Why this type of comments bother me so much? And I realized that they bother me because I wasn't used to them. You know, I, I wasn't used to being in a different environment. But then I say, okay, I know myself. Mm. I love myself. I know the reason why I joined uh, the beauty pageant world. I embrace my femininity. I love the way I look. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I know my worth. I know the reasons I'm doing Beauty Queen. I saw an opportunity to uh, be on a world stage, mm -hmm. put my country on the map. I was the very first Angolan to win something international. So I was proud of my achievement, and I say I'll never allow any comment to make me feel this small again. Right. No, we're proud of you. Another round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The pressure, though. I mean, being a first to achieve something, there's always an expectation. What next? How did you deal with that? And how do you still deal with that? <laughs> wow. I'm glad we have Zozi now. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel... <laughs> <laughs> I really feel relieved. Uh, like I said, it's very hard. I hope my sister, Zozi, I have Zozi as my sister, my bold sister, like I always say. <laughs> um, it's very hard to be a beauty queen. It's hard to be a black beauty queen. It was hard to be an Angolan beauty queen. Like I said, when we don't have experience, things will impact us in a different way, in a harder way. And coming from Angola, a lot of judgment, like, oh, there are, there's so many things that the mm -hmm. country should be investing in, why beauty mm -hmm. pageants. These comments were before I won, because after I won, they were proud. <laughs> <laughs> They were very proud. Of course, the negative comments were like always, you know, making a little bit of noise. But I would say that my reign as Miss Universe, at least for Africa, mm -hmm. was very fulfilling. Very, very. Leila, we're here to talk about soft power, right? And how you have used that to get ahead in your career. But let's start at soft power and Help us understand what that means to you. I, believe, uh, I think it's conquering the universe with soft power, That's right? right? I believe that it's the ability that we have, we all have, to use our voices to inspire, to empower, to change not just our lives, but everyone's life. In a subtle way. Because I imagine that you have sat at very difficult boardrooms. And I say that because I'm talking about Leila, the entrepreneur now. Leila, the business lady who supplies sanitary towels and who supplies diapers to women in Angola who can't afford. I mean, how did you manage to be taken seriously as this beautiful girl? Because that perception still exists that she's a beauty queen. What does she know about business? Oh, it was tough. The jokes, the looks, the, like, the comments, like, why, what, why are you doing? They just go on stage and look pretty. Why, why do you, some people, some women were like, you already won a title. You have a husband with money. Why do you, why do you want to do business? Why do you just stay in London? I, at the time I was living in America. Just stay there, why come here? I was like, this is my people. 
I was born in, I was raised in Angola. I care so much for my people. Like, I, 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 it breaks my heart to see the social injustice in Angola, the inequalities. Like, that's why I always say, that's why now I have, like, being a politician has never been a dream. Never. Even, like, especially, like, growing up in Africa, in Angola, we always are, we are always taught that politics is not for children. <laughs> so as I'm growing up, I realize the importance of, like, fighting. The importance of us women conquering our own freedom, our own space, space in the government, space in the marketplace. So I always say that it's going to be hard. And Being patient is hard, but it's always worth it. And after six years of trying, I have my business. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, Leila, when I, we have to finish this conversation right now, but when we, you and I were talking ahead of time, you said that the universe that you ultimately wanted to conquer with your business was being able to supply sanitary pads and uh, 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 diapers, diapers to people in Angola for free. For free. You want to yes. do it for free. Yes. Right now, I can only donate the uh, proceeds, 100% of the proceeds of my company goes to projects that invest in education and healthcare. But in the future, I'm like my two goals, I have two goals right now, to be able to provide uh, diapers and women hygiene pads to underprivileged families, and to be able to build uh, um, hospitals, health, health centers, hospitals, and maternity, uh, hospitals for women because in Angola, rural er in rural areas, women have to walk long distances mm -hmm. to be able to get medical care. And like, I'm a mother. I was pregnant. I know how tough it is to carry a baby. Like the last few months are just very, very confusing. And we deal with so many emotions, like, will I be able to be a good mother? Will, I be, will my baby be healthy? Now imagine walking like two, three, three hours, and you're about to go into labor. Working, walking three hours to be able to get medical care, to be able to bring mm. a child to the world. It's heartbreaking. And that's my ultimate goal, to be able to build uh, maternity care, maternity centers. So, all right, just one, one word answer. Your politics, what are we seeing there in terms of your goal? Leila for president <laughs> one day? <laughs> Why not? Why not? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Leila, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, and I really do look forward to speaking with you further throughout the day. One more thing. One question for you, please. Uh, ah! <laughs> Fifi. You just asked me if, I'll, if I can be a president, and I say, one, why not? So my question for you is, and I'm asking you this, because every time I tell people that I want to be a politician, especially men, <laughs> they say, why? <laughs> you will be so powerful. See how men know how powerful we are. They, they, they are like, why? You are going to be so powerful, so popular, but they will kill you. Yeah. So from your point of view, how do you think, like, what advice would you give to a young girl like me who wants to be a great leader? I'd give you the advice to speak to women who have walked your path and who happen to be seated right there. Um, a very <laughs> respected minister, and I, would, I'll, I will make the connection. Minister, I apologize in advance for putting you on the spot. You'll get much better advice from her. Leila, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Fifi. Thank you so much. Yabonga. <laughs>